the Son of God. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. We magnify you, Lord. We lift you up, King Jesus. There's none like you in all the earth, oh God. Our souls worship you, God. We cry out to you, God. For mercy, God. We cry out for you, God. For your presence, God. To fill the atmosphere, God. To fill this place, oh God. We cry out for souls to be saved, God. That lives will be transformed. That minds will be healed, oh God. The hearts will be fixed, God. The brokenness be mended, God. We cry out today, God, for the mercy. Let you show yourself strong in our behalf. We praise you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's make a joyful noise in this place. Come on, open up that mouth, O ye gates of hills, and give God glory. Give God praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. We worship the Lord today. You alone are worthy. There's truly none like you, God. We ask, Lord, that you would just move in this atmosphere. As we fill it with praise on today, God. We're asking for a fresh anointing. To fall afresh in this place today, God. Let the voices of your people be echoed in the ears of those that are outside of this building. Let these walls echo our voices, amplify it, so that our neighbors can see it. Let our praise be a beacon of light to those, hallelujah, that are seeking direction today. Oh God, somebody is lost today. I thank you, God, that the praises of your people has become a light to your people so they can find their way back home, God. For so many are lost. So many are tormented. So many are fresh anointing God to fall in this city today God so much violence so much hatred hallelujah going on so many people are lost God we need a fresh anointing hallelujah ah Breathe on this city, God. Hallelujah. That son, that daughter, that child that is lost, seeking direction, God. God, I'm asking that God that you will help them find their way today. We need your power, Lord. Let those who will and would. Hallelujah allow themselves to be that beacon of light God hallelujah so that we can inspire our sons and our daughters instead of provoking so that we can uplift your name God in this place God we need you we need you God we need you as the source of our strength. Come on here. God, we can't do it without you. We can make it on our own. We need you, Lord. But God, I'm willing to be a voice for you. Anybody willing to be a voice for the Lord on today? 
Anybody willing to be a voice for the Lord on today? So God, I'm asking for a fresh anointing. I'm declaring a fresh anointing in this place. I'm declaring the power and the healing power of God to fall afresh in this place on today. I'm declaring that those that are watching live is going to feel this anointing today. They're going to feel their bodies healed on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody believe God to heal and deliver on today? Hallelujah. I'm believing you, Lord, that those that will look at this video, look at this day, hallelujah, years to come, hallelujah, will find the anointing of God, hallelujah, the healing power of God. Today, God, I thank you for crushing for crushing the spirit of suicide I thank you for crushing the spirit of doubt I thank you for crushing those strongholds I thank you for collapsing the enemy's plan against your people today God, we come to worship you. We come to magnify you. We come to give you glory on purpose. God, I don't want you, I, I don't want, if I can't give you all of me, God, I might as well just sit down in my seat and just keep my mouth closed. But I come to give you every ounce of me, God. God said hallelujah they that worship the Lord hallelujah worship him with your whole heart thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus father we bless you we bless you we magnify you. We glorify you, God. For there's none like you, God. I, I want to thank him on purpose. I need somebody that don't mind thanking God on purpose. Come on, just thank him on purpose. Hallelujah. You. you already know he's good to you but thank him on purpose yeah. I thank him for my health and my strength the strength that he gave me to move the strength that he gave me to walk I thank him hallelujah Listen, 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 listen. Joanne, I want you to do me a favor as the head usher in this house. I want you to start something today. When you look around this room and you see anybody looking down that ain't looking at their Bible, on their cell phones, I want you to tell them to put it up. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, 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 because we come here to hear the word of God. Amen. Anybody come to hear the word of God? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. I, 
I'm the type of leader. I I I I, I don't want to be old school like them old pastors. They will stop service and put a check in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I, I want I want I want I want to say something. I want to say something this morning. And I'm going to name this, I come to get a word. Somebody say, I come to get a word. Come to get a word. And let's just say there was, there was two people, two women that didn't know each other, come to the same church for years. And there was one woman that came just for coming to church. And there was another person that came to get a word. But here's the, here's, here's the thing I want to show you right here. I came to get a word. Didn't look like the typical saint. So therefore, I came to get a word. Didn't shout like everybody else. I came to get a word. Didn't dress like everybody else. I came to get a word. Didn't walk or dance like everybody else. I came to get a word. Hallelujah. It was just a typical believe it. But this one person came always to start gossip, to start trouble. So every time I came to get a word, stood up with everybody else, you have that one person will look over. I, I, I came to get a word instead. I'm going to look upside down, look them up and down like, what you doing? And I came to get a word, just never said anything to anybody. Never said anything to anybody. Just sat there, stood up when the pastor says stand. Sat down when he said everybody to be seated. Nobody asked. I came to just get a word. How you doing? Nobody wanted to greet. I came to get a word. To get to know. But just looking at the individual. Because you got people that want to just come to church because they do church. Sunday mornings is just the day they come to church. But you got some people that come to just get a word. They don't want to bother nobody. They don't, they don't want to start. They don't want to get in the clique of the crowds or anything like that. They come, they... They, they come get their offering. They, 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 they speak to people and they go. But, 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 but some, this person didn't like this person because this person wasn't like everybody else. How many of y'all trying to be like everybody else? See, I, I, I want you to think about this real hard. Again, I said this person go, went to the church for years cross path with the other person over and over again nobody talked to the person sat in that seat for years repeated the same thing every week it's not about I'm saying this to, to get you to understand it's not about the level of your praise. Can I speak with somebody today? I'm just, I'm just wanted to speak with, I just want to encourage somebody on today. Because so many of us want to be heard 
want to be noticed. We're talented. We're gifted. So we can produce the things that the, that the church is expecting to be produced in the atmosphere. But there are some people that will come to church and just be humble and modest and sit there and, and, and receive everything. Pastor did this one Sunday morning. He said this. He said, look, because he noticed something that had been going on. Took him a while to notice. And he pointed that person out that was always there, always into the word. He said this right here. He said, I want to ask sister so-and-so this question before I do the altar call. He said, I'm not trying to do this to embarrass anybody, but what I want to know today from her is that the energy that she bestows upon, that she bestows in the ministry, I want to know what was my topic. What did I just preach about? What did I just talk about? And when that person couldn't do it, he opened it up to the vast number of members in the ministry. Some remembered a few things. But after all the times I come to get a word set there, and finally, after this person, nobody was able to answer everything correctly. I came to just get a word stood up. She stood up with a book. And she began to word for word jot down and tell the pastor everything he said. Now listen to this. He said, Pastor, the word you preached last week was this. Sunday before last was that. The Sunday before last was this. Word for word. Begin to tell the pastor the topic. He asked for that Sunday, but she began to go back months and weeks and so that was the first time this woman spoke and she began to she said pastor I thank you for asking the question because I came here to just get a word I don't know nobody I'm not friends with anybody in the ministry. I came to hear a word from God and take in what you were saying. I received every word. But if I had one thing, if the church can do one thing that I've noticed, that everybody is shouting, but nobody is receiving. I want y'all to listen real quick. That some of us are made and forced to come. I know sometimes we got to get on our kids and make them come. Some of us come to just be here. Some of us come because we have a motive when we come. After the church or during service. Some of us got just those, 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 I just want to see what's going on. I just want to talk about somebody. I just, I, I, I just want to make fun of somebody. Some of us just got that. I want to gossip with sister so-and-so. Only time I get to see sister so-and-so. But they're not focusing and receiving what God is saying to them. The pastor's prayer.
preaching, giving every ounce of energy. Matter of fact, it ain't the pastor preaching. God is speaking, but nobody is receiving. And this woman, she sat there for years and she observed this. And what she did was she brought down conviction over the house of God. And everybody in the church begin to feel convicted to the point where I didn't come to ask God to forgive me for what I did last night. I came to do the same thing. I repeated the same thing I do every Sunday. I'm believing God for healing, but I really didn't get my healing because my motive was this. I needed, I had to be there. I didn't get my deliverance because my motive is the fact that I'm not, I, I, I supposed to be at this post this Sunday. And that's what the reason why I'm going. If I'm not going to get delivered, I'm not going to get healed. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. But God said, look, you got to receive me with a whole heart. The woman said this before she, the end of the service, before the pastor gave his benediction, she said, I have one word for the church. It's to be open to the word of God. And everything else will fall in its place. And then next Sunday came and they never saw her again. They never saw her again the following Sunday. They never saw her again after that. God will put people in your ministry that won't say a word until it's time to speak a word. Somebody give God a praise today. And 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 I I, I it is important to understand this that when you come through that door Don't think of it as a job. Don't think of it as a responsibility. Think of it as I come to get a word. Somebody give God praise right now in this place. Come on, I need to hear your praise. Come on, I need you to make some noise. I need you sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, Pentecostal, Church and God of Christ, Baptist, whatever you used to be or whatever you consider yourself is, to give God a praise in this place. Come on now, give God a praise. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Bless your Lord Jesus. See, see, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because some of y'all are still sitting down. Listen, I know some people can't stand up, hallelujah, and God don't require much from them to stand up, because God will hear their praise right where they're at, hallelujah. But some of y'all can walk, and some of y'all can jump, and some of y'all can dance. I need y'all to give God a praise. See, look, look, look. I'm, I'm going to share one more thing with you. If you don't mind, Deacon Davis, Deacon Davis, and there are some of us, we use oxygen machines. But they'll give God praise uh, more high than those of you that ain't even praise. Oh, hallelujah. I know some of y'all bodies ache, but your mouth don't ache. I know you can shout to God. I know you can give God a praise. Now look, if the angels are in heaven, stand holy, holy, holy all day long. Hallelujah. Wash the God, let a closed mouth in there. Hallelujah. You need to start practicing right now by giving God a praise. Oh! Come on, some of y'all are faking. Some of y'all are playing. If you went to a football game, a basketball game, 
when you went to a party, you'll shout louder than this. Somebody need to make some noise in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I came to dance. I came to shout. I came to jump. I came to get loose. I came to let the devil know I'm no longer bound. Come on and celebrate this place. Come on and celebrate this place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have your way in this place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have your way, Lord. He here, Glory. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen, listen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Hallelujah. Now, I came to church today. Now, if I don't get what I want, I'm going to feel some kind of way. Anybody going to feel some kind of way that came to get a word today? I need for you to make some noise. But I'm not going to let so-and-so distract me today because I came to get a word. I came to get my blessing. I came to get my breakthrough. I came... you something I came through all the pain I woke up with a migraine headache I woke up with it but right now I ain't got it I woke up feeling a little bit of back pain thank you Jesus but I got up anyways and I started my way on down here but I'm here to get a word I'm here to receive a word. I'm here. Amen. Hallelujah. dream and I, I was dream I, I was dreaming and I I woke up and I, I and I couldn't get that much sleep and I told my wife I said she said she I said I couldn't sleep and I told her I said I had this dream that something was going on with my son I'm gonna show you something how you if you're not connected to your children get connected I haven't heard from him in a couple months, but, and that's, that's typical. We'll text, converse, and I hear him talking to my son-in-law over and over again because they talk a lot. But God said something. Yeah. It's wrong. And I remember in that dream, I started praying because in that dream, and when I have dreams similar to that, when, so, when my children are being bothered about something or some, some people I may know being bothered about something, some kind of way, Pastor Charles, I would identify a spirit. Yes, yes, yes. 
I will feel this spirit of weight and depression or sickness or whatever the case may be. And in that dream, I'll start praying. And I wake up out the dream. Matter of fact, that while I'm praying, I'm in a battle with this spirit. I want to show you something. I don't just have this dream every blue moon, but I have it. And first, before I before I'm battling this spirit, I'm seeing certain individuals that I'm dealing with that individual, but then all of a sudden I'm in this position where I'm battling the spirit. I can feel the energy of the spirit. Fear wants me to run. But fate tell me to stay. I want to show you something. I learned a long time ago. That your dream belongs to you so whenever I feel that I'll start praying I rebuke you I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus I repeat the words over and over again until that weight I want to show you something and there are times I'll wake up and it's almost as if I can feel this spirit was around me. Move off. And so when I called, I, 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 waited, I waited a little while and I called my son and I said, son, I said, what's going on? I said, you need to call me and talk tell me if you're being bothered by anything he said dad I just don't want to be I just don't want to bother you with anything I just don't want to feel like I'm a burden I said I said son if I ever felt like you were going to be a burden to me I wouldn't have been your father like I am I would, I would have simply disowned you as a child. I would have aborted you or whatever the case may be. But because God gifted my children to me, if I got to see their demons in my dream, fight their battles with them so he began to explain to me what's going on yes he was he was he was feeling sick he was feeling down he was very stressed out and going through some things and I said I want you to promise me that you are to never be afraid to call me or mama and talk to us about it. Because I want to tell you something what the devil want to do. The devil want to, he wants you to find out through social media. Come on now. He wants you to find out through somebody else that your child is going through something. I don't, I, see, your, your children need to know that they got access. you now mama I know you can't help me financially but I need for you to help me emotionally come on can I speak to somebody today can I speak I know we, we, we got we got to do I'm speaking hallelujah because our children I will wake up at times wishing I can go into my mother's arms and wishing she can hold me at times but because I never went to her and said, Mama, hold me. It's because of that man-like mentality. We, we never do it. 
we'll never do it. But we need to reconnect where we have been disconnected to our children. Because so many times I'll see children on social media talking about suicide, talking about they want to hurt themselves, they're talking about their depression. Hallelujah. What they're doing is they're crying out, somebody help. Somebody help me. I don't need a friend saying, let's go out, girl. Let's go out, homie. Let's go hang out. Let's do this. I need somebody to help. I need somebody to help because uh, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you something what, what happened I'm gonna tell you something we as Christians when it come down to the point when we have talked to Christians and we find out our business have been spread we no longer want to talk to people that we think that's supposed to be holding down what our personal stuff so we'll never talk to them whether it's mama, daddy, pastor or anybody else or whoever the case may be we will keep that to ourselves and die in pain and misery because we don't know how to open up to nobody else I'm talking, I'm not yes my son he was going through depression And depression would make you do something. And, and what I can conclude and what I can believe is what I can conclude and what I can believe is God was telling me call your son. I, I want to say this. I want to say this. I, 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 I got five daughters. Youngest being nine. Oldest being 32. And I've noticed that my daughters will go through some things. I don't know why God just shifted. This ain't nothing but God. This ain't nothing but God. This is not me. God shifted this for me to talk about this because mothers, you got children, grown, teenagers, get into their world. I was watching, I don't know if some of y'all saw my, my daughter Hope. She will she will post up online. She was singing. She was singing. She was singing the other day on a video and she sounded so beautiful and I've talked to my daughter before and I said whatever you do when you're going through pain use what you're good at to get through it look up here look up here look up here hope look up here stand up once stand up once I want to let you know, stand up, Khadija, where my faith just went to, and Tori. I want to say something to them because they're here. And I know faith just walked out. But I want to say something to my daughters right now. I am your dad. Y'all know who I am. I've always been in y'all life. I missed a lot of it because I worked real hard. I worked to give you guys that life that you guys can have better. I want to apologize to y'all if it seemed like I wasn't there. Faith. I want to apologize to y'all if it seemed like I wasn't there. 
every thought that in every pain that y'all feel I want to let y'all know I feel it because I'm connected to y'all I'm connected to y'all and what I'm gonna still I'm gonna start doing study asking mom did she hear from Khadija did you hear from faith because I wake up in that mode I'm gonna make it my business to call Khadija I'm gonna make it my business to call faith I'm gonna make it my business to call hope Jalisa Tori always gonna be right there by her side until she get old enough and talk to her that's my vow as a father because hope when you need help fighting your devils Khadija when you need help fighting your devils faith when you need help fighting your devils I want to let you know and Tori I want to help you fight your devils because I'm going to tell you what that we are a family and we are a team and we are stronger together Everybody stand up. The choir is going to come, but I, I want, I want, I want, I want. We're going to shift the, the song real quick. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Come on, that's right. That's 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 the Holy Spirit right there. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I 
fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Somebody give God praise right now. Make some noise. Look. I know, I know God is speaking. I'm going to ask all of y'all to do something again. I asked y'all to do it a few weeks ago. Look, listen. I want you, to, I want, I want, I want y'all to do it again for me. The choir is going to sing in a little bit. We're going to raise our offering. We're going to, uh, they're going to sing right before the word I want if you could if you got a, if you got your envelopes get your envelopes and, you know if you if you pass out the envelope we're going to do offering after this do one thing right here I told y'all about 3 weeks ago maybe 4 weeks ago to take your cell phones and text three people you love them I don't know how many kids you got. I said three people then. But I want you to text your sons and your daughters that you know they got their cell phone numbers and tell them that you love them. Take that opportunity. Take that opportunity. to Take those few moments and just text them and, and just, just do that. Let them know that you love them. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I love you, Lord. I don't know. I just feel that. And I live my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, and
See, I got son-in-laws, and and I, I got a Texas ball. Ah, <laughs> yeah, Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. This is something I want to adopt because I want us to start reaching out to our sons and our daughters. Hallelujah. We take that moment to share our love. Hallelujah. Because it's going to confuse them because they're going to wonder, ain't they in church? Ain't they having church service? Hallelujah. We having church. Hallelujah. Everybody got a chance to do that? I know some of us, we got a lot of children and a lot of love to share. Hallelujah. But it's time to be a blessing unto the Lord. Amen. While you're still doing that, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I need an envelope, Deacon. Amen. Well, while we're still doing, I'm going to read the scripture. Matter of fact, Come on, Minister Harris, read the scripture. It's already set up for you. stand for the reading of the word. Amen. If you can stand and just repeat after me. And Jesus answered said unto them have faith in God. For, ver for verily I say unto you that so whoever so ever, shall say unto this mountain be thy removed. And be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, ye pray. Believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have oath against any, that your Father, also which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespass and the word is blessed. Amen. Amen. I, I, I need another envelope. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Well, we're going to be standing and we're going to follow the direction of our usher. If you're still in your texting position, Amen. I, I, like I said, I know a lot of us, we do, we're doing some texting. It's using your technology to reach those loved ones. Amen.
Somebody say, you can't be God. You can't be God. Given. Given. No matter how. No matter how. Hard. Hard. You, you try. You try. Amen. Real softly, we're going to pray over the offering. Listen. How many of y'all believe in this? The word. Amen. Hallelujah. I heard it. Minister Eric, he was he shared with me that uh, God blessed him to be able to do some things, and uh, God really bless you. I saw it, and I see the evidence and how God is working with you. When you start asking God for something, God put that on a production line. I'm say something. I'm telling. I'm telling you something right now. When you be faithful to God, everything you ask for. He'll produce. Ooh. He will do. He will put. He, he will produce whatever you ask him for because of your faithfulness. Ooh. Spirit of the living God, we thank and we praise you for being God in this house. I thank you, God, for every giver. Thank you for those that didn't have to give but gave anyway. I thank you for the notes that will be placed on the envelopes for every believer. That's what I want y'all to start doing. I want you to start putting notes on your envelopes. Whatever you want, God, just put the note on the envelope. Put the note on there because... We're going to believe God to meet that. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank you for replying to their need today. Thank you for the jobs, promotion, financial blessings, healings, deliverance, whatever it is, God. Breaking up the strongholds. I thank you, God, for what you're doing. So, God, I'm asking that you would just bless this offering and the purpose in which it's going to be used in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody, give God praise. Listen. Now, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I need a little bit more room. <laughs> Ooh, I need a little bit more room. Because what I'm about to ask them for, it may not be no room for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I'm, I'm, I need a little bit more room because I, 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 I might do something. I'm not, I'm not planning on doing it intentionally because I'm asking God to expand something. Hallelujah. But I want to let y'all know that when we ask God to expand something for us, I want y'all to be prepared because it's not always going to feel comfortable. Because expansion takes construction. Expansion takes production. Expansion takes a reality that your faith is going to have to be stretched. So I want you to repeat that to me. Lord, enlarge 
my territory. Now we've been saying this every Sunday for years. And some of us got a little bit ways to go. But how, I, I, I thank God because mine has taken leaps and boundaries. Lord. Lord. Enlarge. Enlarge. My territory. My territory. Now look. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. I remember some years ago. Pastor Hibbler, you was telling me about some things you and your mother wanted to do and how y'all want to just reach out in different states. And we said this over and over every year. Lord, expand my territory. Look, they were renting vans and spending a lot of money on renting vans. God took them from renting a van to giving them a bus. And, and, and so he, he took his complaint to God saying, God, because we don't have enough room for the stuff we need to bring to these other places. And, and, and the Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. So every Sunday we said, Lord, come on, everybody. Lord. Enlarge. Enlarge. My territory. My territory. So he no longer, he no longer just have a 15 passenger vehicle. He have a storage compartment. He has a storage compartment. Big enough to hold what he needs to bring to wherever he got to bring it to. Now I need some believers that know. Don't talk about me when I'm struggling because I'll struggle until God bless me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I'll keep telling God, enlarge my territory every Sunday morning. I don't care, but until. Somebody say a little room, little room is about to happen. It's about to happen. Take that deep breath because we want to let the devil know today that God is a about to do a new thing. Somebody say, Lord, Lord, enlarge, enlarge my territory. Hallelujah. Now, won't God do it? Won't God do it? Yes, He will. Won't God do it? Yes, He will. Now, give God a praise in this place. Yes, he will. Because he's healing your body right now. Thank you, Jesus. He's delivering your sons and your daughters right now. Somebody say right now. Woo! He changed my status. Somebody say, change my status. Because God is about to change your status. From being a borrower to being a lender. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! My 
Buenas tardes. Ajá. Mm. Hey, Amen. Come on, Sandra, before I keep on going. Hallelujah. See, you didn't know you were coming to church today for a status change. You didn't know that today. You came here just, just because the God said, I'm going to change their status. Hallelujah. Now listen, 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 listen. I, I want to say this, Sandra, before you say something. Every, every month, especially in the years, during certain quarters, banks and businesses have to meet a certain quota. Banks, their quotas, especially when it comes to the loan department, they got to give out so many loans. So at a certain part of the month towards the end, they will, they will give people loans that really don't even really qualify. And because we don't take advantage of that, and you don't, you don't see, I, I've tried it, and God has provided. Hallelujah. So they got to meet a quota. And so if they're not meeting that quota of loans and, 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 and uh, whatever it is that you need when you go into the bank for, the bank's would do that. Of course, there's certain things that you need to have in place. But I serve a God. I want y'all to start going to a bank at the end of the month. Those of you that's trying to do something special, doing something great, trying to get a house or whatever, go towards the end. And just try that. Take my word. If you got everything in place and you're doing everything you could, watch things change in your status. But I said this, say this right here. Every Sunday, you got millions of people that will worship God and come in for, 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 for God to do something for them. But the one thing a lot of people don't ask for, because it's un it, it don't always feel comfortable, is for a status change. For a status change. Because if I'm going to change your status, Charles, I'm going to have to take you through something. Because you just can't come to me saying you want to get a car, but I need to see if you can take care of it. You can't just come to me saying, Lord, I need this, so now I'm going to go through all the things that you are doing for me. I'm going to look at what you got. Like I, I said to this before y'all before, your praise goes into a spiritual bank account. And when it comes down to it, when you need something from God, you'll make a spiritual withdrawal. I want to show you something. That even when you're in a hospital and the doctor said you're not leaving here walking, you're going to be leaving here on a stretcher. I want to show you something. Because of your praise and your belief in God and all of those deposits, Jesse, God said, I'm going to make a withdrawal for him. I, I know your story. God said, I'm going to make a withdrawal for you. Because the doctor said this. But I'm saying this. Because he got a withdrawal. That he needs to make her. He can't even speak for himself right now. So I'm going to send my angels uh, to make a deposit in his life. Uh, and he will. So every praise that you make is a spiritual deposit. And when you need it, it's a spiritual withdrawal. How, and, 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 and I'm going to tell you this right here. Some of us may think we need it right now. 
And a lot of stuff that we ask God for, we can wait on it. God said, so the, the old saying you say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always in time. That's when God say, it's time to make that withdrawal. Ooh, come on, sorry, you go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm trying to sit down. I'm going to sit down. It's all right, because everything that's been said has been needed to be said, and it's been such a blessing today. God is good, and he's good all the time. Our announcements for today is as follows. Every first Sunday at 10 a.m. is the minister's deacon and deaconess class. Also, from the pastor, we are asking for school supplies and book bag donations for the back-to-school block party. Please see um, either Deaconess Davis, um, Sandra Anderson, or me if you have any donations that you want to give. And also, next week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know when, what date we're going to need volunteers because not only do we have to volunteer for the block party, but we have to prepare before the block party. So we have to put the book bags together and things of that nature. So the next meeting, um, I'll let you guys know know the date so that we can come together and put things together because we have less than a month. We have less than a month and so we want to make this happen. Our goal, pastor's goal is 250 book bags and um, full of supplies um, and I'm going to read the, um, the flyer. It's going to be more added to this. This is just a general one so that we could use for advertisement now. So Redeem Faith Fellowship 8th Annual um, Blocks, um, back to school block party, August 6th from 11 to 3 p.m. Um, this is a free event. It's going to be a petting zoo there, bounce houses, clothing and shoes, um, new clothing, shoes, barbecue, raffle, book bag, um, and supplies. There are going to be multiple vendors there. A lot of things. We're doing it much bigger than we usually do it, and we're going to have more space, so we need all hands on deck to volunteer all hands so if you are available and um and you have some time on your hand please feel free to um come out and volunteer so we'll be letting you guys know and also if we don't come to you individually it's not that we're looking over anybody we may have forgotten come to us it's very few of us that's that's overseeing so if we forget you it's not that we forget you on purpose come to us we always need volunteers and also on on um saturday july 23rd here at redeemed faith fellowship we'll be having a soul food dinners um so if you want to um order your dinners in advance you can do that if you want to pay for them in advance you can do that well the menu consists of chicken and fish are our meats um, the size consists of greens, macaroni and cheese, dressing, yams, popcorn, and cake, and so all dollars. So if that's something that um, you want to enjoy, um, come out on that day. Or you can pre-order, like we said. Um, if you want to donate food to uh, um, help offset the cost of the dinners, Feel free to do that. You can contact Deaconess Davis. You can contact myself or Sandra Anderson. So, um, and I keep saying her last name because my name is Sandra Cannon. So, <laughs> I don't want anybody to be confused. So, you can contact either the Sandras or Vivian Davis, um, even um, Mother Brian also. So, also downstairs after church, we'll be doing, we'll be having our candy sales too. And this is all a part of our building fundraiser. I can't wait for you guys to see the 360 view of how the church is going to um, look once um, they get finished after the groundbreaking. Amen? Also, if you um, ride in the church van, please refrain from eating in it. We need to keep the van clean, so make sure that you clean up behind yourselves and your children. The food pantry is open every second Saturday. I'm, I'm sorry, not Saturday, every second and fourth Tuesday. But if you are in need of food before then, please contact Deaconess Davis or you can drop by the church um, any weekday um, before 2.30. If you have non-perishable food or clothing or household items that you want to donate, feel free to donate. A lot of people, if the church is not open, they'll set it out there on the tables. That's fine if you do that. Um, 
The Women Exercise Class actually is, is canceled for the month of July. We have a lot going on this month. So um, I'll be announcing when we're going to start that back up. A new thing, praise um, in extended praise dance skit rehearsal is Saturdays at noon. Um, those who signed up, we look forward to seeing you here. I know I haven't reached out to anybody yet that signed up. But um, I reached out to a few people. But if you're still interested, please come Saturday at noon. Building fundraiser, like I said, the candy sale will be after the service today. Do we have any other announcements? Did I leave anything out? No. And <laughs> Are there any guests? If so, would you please stand? You can't hear me? Who said something? sorry it's right here too i'm sorry the men's prayer breakfast um has been awesome um they had it yesterday and man um i came in for rehearsal thinking it was gonna be extra but of course they ate everything <laughs> if you want to get food for the mind body and soul redeemed faith will be the place to be the next breakfast will be on the second saturday in august um if you want to donate to the men's prayer breakfast, please see either Minister Harris, raise your hand, or, or Pastor Emory, raise your hand. Amen? These are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. The picnic is August 6th, the first Saturday in August. That's the black party? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the black party. Amen. We do. Did we say uh, it was a testimony? Uh, uh, Vivian, come on up. Good afternoon or good morning. I don't know what time it is. But, mm, you know, you praise God in advance. And when you do things like that, God is preparing you for things. The devil is busy. He's, he's getting, he's messing with marriages, but he also messing with our kids. Pastor hit on what I wanted to say today when he talked about his kids. I got a phone call from my son, oldest son. I got a phone call from his wife. I got a call from my youngest son. I got a call from his wife. And, and I'm like, Lord, what am I to do? I didn't even know if I could have the strength to talk to him, to pray with him, which I ended up praying. But you know what? God had me praying already. He woke me up out of my sleep saying, pray for your kids. And that was like two days before I talked to anybody. And they were going through, and I was talking to them, and I'm like, Lord, I'm stressed out. I, got, I began to get stressed out and didn't know how what I was doing, I wasn't sleeping, I couldn't function or do the things that I normally do every day. And I'm like, Lord, what am I to do? And he said to kneel and pray. And I began to pray while I was walking, pray while I was, everything I was doing, I just was saying, thank you, Lord. But God is trying to destroy our children and our marriages. You know, these young people, they're trying to mimic me and my husband been married a long time, and they're trying my sons see how successful we are in our marriage, and that's what they want, and that's what they crave after. And the women that they chose, they love those women, but the devil just come in. He come in to kill, steal, and destroy, and I'm sure he's in other relationships, because while I was on the phone trying to call my friend to tell her where I'm on my way to my son's house to try to stop them, she was on her way to her son's house to stop them. And we realized that at the same time, we were both headed to our son's house. So, but you know, God is doing a new thing. He is changing some things around. And if they would learn to put God first, oh my God, the things that they would have. I found myself, it was like I found myself being angry. And every time I'm like, Will he say something? I'm like, ah, you know. But you know what he did? He said, I love you, baby. 
He said, I love you, baby. The devil tried to use me, what they were going through to get to me and my husband, but my husband stopped it. He said, it stops right here. So I'm just saying, you know, God is working. And I can't do nothing but praise him, y'all. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are awesome. You know, that's, that's, that's. And I'm here today and the things I'm hearing the pastor talking. And he's telling me about his kids. And he's telling me about his son. And I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Oh, my God. Thank you, guys, for listening. Thank you. Keep me in your prayers. I just want to say something that Patrick, Pastor mentioned uh, last week. We all can use this when you go to your house. Enough! That's all I want to say. Praise to God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We, we're going to have... Uh, you guys want to sing... Y'all come on up the praise team. And then after the praise team... We do have a praise dance, right? Okay. All right. Do y'all want to go before or after? Okay, I tell y'all what. Let the praise team come. Then the, no, let the praise dance. Y'all ready to praise the praise dance? Y'all ready? Okay. All right. We'll do the praise dance. Then after they have came, once they have left the stage, the next voice y'all hear is from the praise team. Amen.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless him in this place. Hallelujah. Y'all can do better than that. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord today? I need about five folks to just say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. I lift my hands and toe to adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. If you know it, help me say it. I live, I live my hands in total adoration to you. Cause you reign, you reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to I you, sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Cause I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything come on help us say it say i love you jesus i love you jesus i worship and i worship and just want to tell you just want to tell you what i love you i love you Come on, one more time, say, say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship Him. I worship Him. Just want to tell you. 
more than anything. Come on, help me say, say more than anything. Say more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Yeah, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Come on, talk to him in this place. Lord, we love I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me, and such a special, if you know what help me say, that's why I praise you, I lift you up, I lift you up, and I Take it to the next part. Say my heart, my heart, my mind, my mind, my soul belongs, my soul belongs to you. You pay, you pay the price for me. Way back, way back on Calvary. That's why I, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart, that's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. One more time, say yeah. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Now let's bless them in this place. Come on, let's bless them in this place. We worship you. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, oh Lord, oh Lord. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Every day of my life, Jesus. That's why my heart is filled with praise. You know the devil don't like your praise. He don't want you to worship God. But you can let him know. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh Lord. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, give God some praise in here today. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. Awesome worship. Love that praise dance this morning. God is doing a great thing in this place. Amen. We got a special treat for us today. Pastor Little Anthony, he want to bring a message to us this morning. You got five minutes, young man. Come on. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah.
I feel the blessing to God to my family and me. We've been through this thing until we give us help in the homeless. That's why we call it the Greater Good Tour. Because we help God with the things. And once I love God, I just feel this thing. And God just straight up good. And once I see that God just walk, I just love it because my grandma and my sister and my dad always stay with me. My mama, she made sure. We don't stay like just by ourselves. She help us and everybody, part of my family, I love. Cause they just help me. Especially my grandma, cause my grandma help me. And once my grandma help me, smile on my face. My dad, he makes sure we have our fun life. And my sisters always got my back because we stay with each other. My mama, she had surgery, but she couldn't do it without Pastor Charles. And I just want to say, wherever you are, Mama, I love you. I love everybody who comes to this church because we family. Because God sits after us. Amen. That's so awesome. Amen. Thank you, young man. God is doing a great work in that young man's life. You know, we got to continue to cover our children. Pastor said it earlier. You keep on covering them. I get dreams about my son quite often. And when I do, I'll call and check on him. Make sure he's doing all right. But I got a message this morning. I'm trying to be brief with this. Cause we got communion today as well. But also I want to let you know that um, Minister LaShonda, she is recovering very well from her surgery. God is really giving her that refreshing. If you all know her, she don't like to sit down. And one of her godmothers called the other day and said, Pastor, I'm going to call you daddy. She said, you may listen to daddy. That's what he told her. <laughs> because daddy going to make sure you're all right. I said, well, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to go over there and then I'm going to go to go to Ephesians chapter 4. I got a couple of scriptures that's in my spirit. First Corinthians chapter 12. I'm just trying to get myself situated here with this thing. Excuse me for a second. Amen, amen, amen. I'm 
I'm almost ready. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. First Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto dumb, these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Verse 3. Wherefore, I give you un to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that, that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Verse 5. And there are different administrations, but the same Lord. Verse 6. And these diversities of operation, but is the same God which worketh in all. Talking about the gifts. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with him. Verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, and by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. Another, discerning spirits. And to another, diverse kinds of tongues. And another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work is that one and the same self-spirit. Divided to every man severally as he will. Verse 12, for as the body is one and has many members, all members that are of that body, being many, are what? One body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into his body, whether it be Jews or Gentiles, whether it be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Amen. For the body is not one member, but many members. For if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is there not therefore of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body. Is there therefore not of the body? And if the whole body were an eye, where, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. You may be seated. You may be seated. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. For the perfecting of the saints, right? For the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. So I have many scriptures, but I'm not going to go through all of them today. I'm just going to use these two passages here. But the subject I would have today, I want you to look at your neighbor. I want somebody to look at somebody here today. And say to them, I need you. Look at somebody else on the other side of you. And tell them, I need you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So giving honor to God, most ahead of my life, to our pastor, the church, to all of you guys, children, the ministers, prophets, all of us. For the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And his presence is moving in the atmosphere. Amen. I was thinking about this all week long about the body of Christ. I even had dreams concerning the body of Christ, how God came to me and he spoke to me. And he says, the body is lacking. In the dream, God said the body is lacking. And I said, God, what you mean by the body is lacking? He says because everybody else is eliminating somebody else. We eliminate.
eliminate the parts of the body that we feel is insignificant. So God said the body is lacking. So I read these scriptures, I read these many times before in the past, even preached this passage. And God began to speak and says, I need you. I need you. I need you. And I thought about it, just like a physical body, we have five senses, right? Sight, smell, taste, touch, hearing, all that, right? If one part of your functions is not working, what happens to the other part? It keeps working. Matter of fact, it works overtime to take the slack of the part that's, that's not working, right? How come the body of Christ doesn't do the same thing? If one part of the member of the body of Christ is suffering, how come we don't reach out and say, hey, are you okay? What's going on in your life? I need to pray for you. I need to encourage you. I need to build you up because I feel in the spirit something is lacking. And when God began to speak, he took me to Ephesians. He says he gave some apostles. And I looked up an Amplified Version. The Amplified Version says like this. And his gifts were varied. That means many. And he, he himself appointed and gave to men, gave to men to us some apostles, special messengers. You know what apostle does? Establish churches. The special messengers that God handpicked and selected throughout the years since Jesus came on the scene. The same people that follow and study on the Jesus ministry were anointed as apostles. And because the same anointed on him, now it triggers to today's time where you still have modern day apostles who walk after the word of God. You got some apostles walk about themselves. It ain't about the word. It's about a name for themselves, getting fame and glory for themselves, just to call themselves an apostle. But when God began to speak, he said, some prophets, inspired preachers, prophets, inspired preachers, right? But check this out. And expounders. How many know what expounders is? You know what an expounder is? Just raise your hand. An expounder is someone who's going to explain to you what God said. So a prophet hears from the Holy Spirit, gets divine information, gets a revelation, reveals it to God's people because something needs to be explained to change the mindset of God's children. Right? So when God began to speak, he says, not only that, he gave some evangelists, preachers of the gospel. God is calling for the evangelists to wake up. We look in the news every day. All this unmerciful killing, shootings, all this stuff is going on. And God says, I need you to wake up evangelists. Because the evangelists are messengers who takes the gospel to the streets, overseas, to foreign countries. Why? Because God has a word to change the lives of his people. Glory to God. But then it says, traveling missionaries, some pastors, shepherds of the, his flock, and teachers. That's why you got pastors. They're shepherds. They're ordained by God to lead, to guide, to direct, to counsel, to encourage, to strengthen the body of Christ. Because without the shepherd, how can they hear without a preacher? So God says that all these gifts are here in place for the edifying. That means erecting, building up, establishing the foundation of the body of Christ. But a lot of times we come in the house of God and we act like we don't know the gospel. I've been to many churches. Pastors don't even open up their Bible. 
They preach from the intellect. Preach from their feelings and emotions. How can he preach unless he's been sent? If you have not been sent to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're in the wrong place. Because the word says he made us all. You, 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 everybody in this room. An able minister of the gospel. Guess what? We have no excuse. You go to work, you have no excuse. Go in the grocery store, you have no excuse. Go in your neighborhood, you have no excuse. Because he made you an able. That means you got some, some activities that are functioning that can speak the gospel. But the problem comes in, I get fear in my heart because I know God says to speak to that drug out on the corner or that prostitute or that pimp. And I'm afraid because I don't want them to reject me. We forget about Jesus. He went through the greatest rejection. He was despised by all men of his own people. He said he came unto his own and his own received him not. Right? So if his own didn't receive him, what makes you any different? We're living in perilous times where God says, I'm raising up a remnant who's going to proclaim the gospel. Who's not going to compromise? Who's not going to sit in the shadows and watch people pass them by? No, I'm going to speak the word. Because somebody that we know every day of our lives, we pass somebody that needs to hear the gospel. Where I live at, Veterans Manor, many of the brethren, they know me as the Pastor Charles. And anytime anyone moving that building, they said, you need a preacher? That's him right there. Because he's the one that's going to tell you the truth. I made a name for God by being who I am. You know what I said? A name for God by being who I am. I didn't want the credit. For them to God be the glory. So anytime someone is going through something in that building, you know what they do? they like Nicodemus. They come privately seeking me out. So you can get a word to help change their situation. We have to be willing vessels and available, as the word says, in season and out of season. Because there comes a time when you're not ready because you ain't studied. Get in your Bibles. God is saying today, get in your Bibles. Get in that word. Because that word is going to build your muscles. So when the enemy comes in, I'm ready now. I'm built up to fight the enemy, to stand against them. I love Minister, Minister Prophet Charlene. I love when she brings her boxing glove because she lets us know that I come ready for battle. Are you ready for battle here today? Y'all quiet today. Y'all, I preach myself happy. Y'all too quiet in here today. But that's okay because I'll still preach to myself. See, if you don't want to be encouraged, I'll encourage myself. Because David, he had to get a revelation that when he couldn't find nobody else, he said, I will encourage myself in the Lord my God. Glory to God. So when I went to 1 Corinthians, it was explained to me how all these different things that God placed in the body of Christ and the enemy comes along to deceive God's people in the house of God to not be encouraged. He wants to bring discouragement. He wants to tear down your marriage. He wants to tear down your family. Break your children apart. Call them a feud against each other. You look in the news, children fighting children. Killing one another. But God says it's for our understanding to get a revelation of the gifts he placed in the body. So if one body is hurting, the other part said, you know what? Let me minister to that arm because that arm got bruised. That leg got cut. My mind confused. My heart is broken. And God says every member, every joint supply is because one part is lacking. The other part takes up the slack. Glory to God. He said, but the manifestation, I love that word, manifest. 
every day. I said, God, manifest your glory. Because I want to see your glory. I want to be like Moses on the mountain top. I want to be right there when God says, you know what, Moses? I can't show you the fullness of my glory. But I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. Come on, I'm going to hide you in the rock. He said, I can protect you. Because if you saw my glory, you're going to die. But the spirit, the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man that would profit you. We always talk about prosperity. We always identify with money and treasures and wealth of the world. But I come to let you know that ain't what it's talking about. Because when you get a revelation of the gift God given you, it caused the whole body to prosper. Caused the whole body to get edified. Caused the whole body to be healed. Caused the whole body to come together in unity. Caused the whole body to be rever get a revelation who God is to them in the mighty name of Jesus. And you know that when one part hurts, God said, you can't say, I don't need that part. And one thing Jesus said to his disciples, he said, you know what? You got sin in your life. It's better to enter the heaven with one eye than both eyes being full of sin. Sometimes we got to allow God to cut things off in your life. Cut some people off in your life. Cut some places off in your life that you've been going. Why? Because God wants to perfect you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to empower you. He wants to sanctify you. He wants to build you up in your spiritual muscles. That every time you go through the storm of life, the peace of God will begin to manifest. The devil is a liar today. I come to tell you today when you need joy, you need to get up on your feet and tell God, manifest your glory in me today. You need peace of mind. Get up on your feet. Tell God, I need your peace. I need your strength. Because sometimes I get weak and worn. Sometimes I get burdened down. Sometimes I get wearing in my journey. But God, I need your presence. Your manifested glory to surround me now. In the name of Jesus, I come to tell you today that when you're crying in the midnight hour, when you're crying, when you're burning down, when you're crying, when you've been afflicted, God will show up in the nick of time. He promises that when the righteous call unto him, he will deliver them speedily. That's the God I serve. Doesn't matter what's going on. I told the Lord, for God I live. For God I'm willing to die. If I have to go through the persecution, they have to be lied on and ridiculed. They have to be talked about and scandalized. For God I live. Hey, God I'm willing to die. You've been too good to me. To be quiet in the house of God. You've been too good to me. You brought me a mighty long way. And God, I want to tell you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being my confidant, for being my friend. Everybody else turned their back on me. I want to thank you, Jesus, for being Ezekiel's will in the middle of a will. I want to thank you, Jesus, for showing me there's a way out of every circumstance. And I hold my peace. If I hold my peace, if I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Everything going to be all right. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Don't know about you. If you've ever been through anything. But I tell you, I've been through some stuff. I could have lost my mind a long time ago. I've been persecuted. I should have been dead a long time ago. But thank God for Jesus hanging on that cross. He hung on that cross for you and for me. Everything I went through, he was right there all alone 
walking side by side, embracing me in his loving arms. Let me know everything going to be all right. No matter what I went through, sometimes I had to cry, but I found out he took my tears as a sweet smelling savior. He offered to the Father and interceded for me. That today I stand before you, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Cause of God, I live. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. I need you. You need me to stand together and agree together that God is able to do exceedingly above and beyond all I can ask or think because of his grace because of his mercy I don't know about you but I found out with amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch that saved the wretch that saved the wretch like me I once was lost but I come to tell you today somebody reached down right where I was in the pit of despair somebody reached down in my depressing moment somebody reached down in my brokenness somebody reached down and he found me I was blind I, I was so blind couldn't see my hand before my face I was so blind because of the sin in my life I was so blind because the mess I allowed in my life but I want to tell you today if you open up your heart he'll come into you so I was blind but now I see when I was willing say God I need you I can't make it on my own I tried to fix it myself the more I tried the worse things got the more I tried the more mess I got entangled in the more I tried it's like being in a spider's web and can't get out the more I tried I got more messed up but thank God for Jesus hung on that cross he hung on that cross but the Bible says he didn't stop there he went down to the grave stayed there three days and three nights he did that for you and for me he went in that grave but there was a rumble in the grave on the third day the ground began to quake the earth began to roar because something about to happen I come to tell you on that third day he got up he got up he got up with all power in his hand you need Jesus today I come to tell you he's here he's right where you are your situation it ain't bad as what it seems he knows all about it he's here for you right where you are to mend the broken heart and bind up your wound you know what it's talking about he's like super glue in your wound he'll seal it where it can't rip open but then only that he embraced you in his loving arms and he mends the brokenness he puts it back together he lets you know that I'm here in that broken marriage that broken family your broken life your confused mind he says I'm here I'm right there in that place where you've been crying all night long nobody knows your pain he says I'm right there in that place <laughs> to heal me to heal you 
set you free. Won't you do me a favor? When everyone is standing all over the room, stand all over the room. to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you hear me every time I call. Sometimes I feel alone. I feel abandoned. I feel like nobody cares about me. But I found out that you are there all the time. And I ask God right now that you come into my heart to mend the brokenness, to restore me, to revive me, even refresh my spirit with your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me for my sins For the times I failed to trust you. The times I walked away. But yet you still calling my name. To come back home. And now Lord. I make a decision. To come back to you. That you would have your way in my life. Whatever's in me God. That's not pleasing to you. Take it out of me and deliver me. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, I said, give God praise. Amen. Come on. Come on, put those hands together one more time. Look, we're we're, we're going to do our communion, Deacon Davis. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to do something. You come on up, mothers, those of you that are just helping out. Let's give God a, a, a praise for that word. Anybody get what they came for so far? Anybody get what they came for? Now, I'm going to ask you that question right here. Are you that person that came to get a word? That's me. I came to get a word. Somebody say, that's me. I came to get a word. That's me. That's me. I came to get a word. Hallelujah. Let's point our hand this way before we do this communion. Deacon Cannon, if you would, do me a favor. Get those young men. Let's point our hands towards him. Spirit of the living God, we thank and praise you for the word. I'm asking God that you would bless Pastor Charles from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Give him back that dunamis power that you have exploded in him right now. That he has given to us. We came with expectations. And God, you have given us a full stomach. I thank you, God, because none of us are going to leave here the same. All things have become new in our lives. Because you have poured into Charles 
God, I'm asking now that you will pour back into him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, God, you've been good to me. I'm going to ask everyone that want to participate in the communion to come at this time to receive a cup. And those of you that can't come, we'll come to you. Can you get one for Jesse, Pastor Charles? Everyone receive their cups. Minister Eric is going to read the first verse and then we're going to pause and eat the bread. And then when he read down to the third verse, we're going to pause and drink the cup. And he's going to read the last verse. And we're going to celebrate. Amen. Go ahead. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup 
which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long. They whipped him all night long for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Amen. Amen. Spirit of the living God, we thank and we praise you for the opportunity to be blessed by you. We thank you, God, that when we get ready to leave this place, but never from your presence, all things have become new in our lives. And I want to say to y'all, just like Joseph said earlier, I want to say it again. I want you to go home in your house and I want you to shout enough. Hallelujah. So now, Lord, when we leave this place, but never from your presence, may your rest rule and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen. Rodney. Maisha.